Um, I, we're we're fine. Um, we don't have any debts. We don't owe anybody any money. We're still profitable even today, and um, nobody, not that many people owe us money. We have pretty good um, debt control, so um, yeah, um, we're we're pretty good. And um, yeah, so um, as David said, this is not the first time we've been through this one of these things. And we even in the bull markets, we have always had the mentality that Bitcoin can go eighty percent down. Um, over over a period of time, and it may last for you know months or years. So we're okay. Yeah. What what did you guys do differently? Because um, some crypto companies, I'd call them crypto banks, maybe are not faring so well. What was different about the positioning of Binance going into this? Um, I think many, well, the fundamentally, many companies when we in the bull market, every, every com- many companies just sort of expected that the bull market will continue indefinitely. Markets don't do that. Market go bull, bear, bull, bear, um, just goes in cycles. So we we understood that, and we just held a l- fairly large amount of cash reserves w- uh, during the bull markets. And um, luckily, also for us, our income comes into different cryptocurrencies, and stablecoin is one of those. Uh, like stablecoins count, accounts to about twenty five percent to thirty to thirty percent of our income. So we're like we're relying heavily on that now. So yeah, I think overall we we like I just did uh, just because we're in, in a new industry, we're quite uh, expectant of the uh, cycles. So just having that mindset really helps, I think. Yeah, certainly, and and it's uh, paying off very, very much right now in in this bear market. As I alluded to in the intro, I think it's basically like Binance and FTX that are the like well capitalized players right now, uh, and like FTX is being pretty damn aggressive with like kind of the fire sales that are going on right now. Like BlockFi is having a fire sale at like a twenty five million dollar valuation, and, and FTX is trying to get in on that. I'm wondering, like, what is Binance tr- uh, looking at? Like, with all the uh, ca- ha- having cash on hand is a very rare opportunity at this moment. What opportunities in yeah. the crypto mar- markets are you really looking at at the moment? Yeah, I think um, so. Basically, we're looking at like all the same opportunities come to all of us. Um, in fact, like we look at all the opportunities, probably we probably have first picks on all of those opportunities. Um, so we try to keep it. We try to respect the confidentiality clauses we have with our partners, so that we don't really disclose ongoing deals. Um, so if that if there's a deal in discussion, we try not to disclose much of it. And even if after it concludes, we uh, we still try to uh, observe the confidentiality aspects of it. But the same deals that you see in the news uh, that um, other people look at, we they they typically come to us first. Um, so being the large, I think I'm pretty confident we have the lar- by far the largest cash reserve right now, um, and most of this. And so we do have first picks, um, and um, but uh, not all deals. Uh, well, uh, we like we like to save the industry as much as possible, but not all deal, not all projects are worth saving. Um, if the projects are badly badly run, badly designed, um, other mm, problems that are hard to fix, um, then uh, it, it's. It's generally not good to put bad money after or good money after bad money, right? We you don't want to bail out companies that are mismanaged. Um, so, um, but we do want to help the majority of companies to uh, uh, that have a little bit of a liquidity crunch to go through the cycle. And we're talking with like yeah, fifty plus of them. Yeah. Wow, fifty plus of them. I think like people are taking bets and and who's going to bail out more of these crypto companies is it SBF or CZ? I guess that uh, remains to be seen. I think we both have to do our part. Um, whoever has cash right now should do their part. Um, I think FTX is more U.S. focused. Um, Sam is in the U.S. all the time, etc. So, um, um, so uh, we're more globally uh, distributed. So we, but we there's a large number of deals in the U.S. And also during the last couple of years, there's a lot of lending protocols developed in the U.S. Um, so quite a number of them are on the liquidity crunch. So um, uh, there's more deals happening in the U.S., but we're looking at that. Um, but we're also looking at the world globally as well. But I mean, it's not one. It's not us, us versus them. It's really like let's just do. Let's all do what we can. Yeah. Well, and what what are you? Um, how are you hoping to position Binance coming out of this? So I mean, bear markets. If you can last, if you can sustain through them. This goes for a retail holder, bankless listener. Uh, if you sustain yourself through the bear market, you come out stronger on the other side. It also goes, um, the same principle applies to crypto companies, and Binance is no exception, of course. So you guys have an opportunity actually to get stronger during the bear market and to come back the next cycle even stronger. In what ways would you like to position yourself during the bear market to, to come out stronger? Uh, what do you kind of, what competencies are you developing? What key areas are you planning to invest in? 
Sure. I mean, there's two aspects, right? So for um, for industry players like ourselves, now is actually the best time to hire talent. Um, so there's much more talent in, available in the pool now, and also you don't have uh, we have less other companies competing for the same talent with ridiculous um, salaries, compensation, etc. That didn't make sense. I mean, a year ago, if a university grad out of college, if they knew Solidity programming, they can get an offer for half a million dollars a year. I mean, I think that's kind of, you know, that's a bit overboard, to be honest. So now we're seeing much more reasonable uh, situations in the industry. Uh, we're looking at investing more um, in bear markets. There will be more consolidation. <clears throat> and the guys who have cash and the guys who are left standing, who have very strong business models, and strong product will benefit. We actually will, uh, th th there will be more uh, uh, consolidation, which means basically more market share, more users. Um, the total number of users may stay the same or even drop a little bit because people, uh, some of bear market push some of the people out. But the, um, uh, the, the market share increases and the positions, uh, the, the influence in the increases. When the next bull market comes, we're in a very good position to take advantage of that. Um, and then the invest investments, M&As are all tied to that. For retail investors, the first thing, of course, is to survive. So make sure that you have enough money that your lifestyle is not impacted. Um, the second thing, if you have extra money, um, now is actually not a bad time. Well, different people use different uh, strategies. I don't want to recommend any specific strategy, but some people like, you know, micro seller, um, or Salvador, they're, they're, they're buying now so that the average cost actually comes down. Um, and if they can last for a few, uh, 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 through this bear, uh, bear market, on the next bull market, they'll have more holdings. So now it's actually a, a very cheap time to buy, I, uh, well, uh, uh, if, if we're in a bear market. Um, I want to be careful uh, uh, giving financial advices, not giving financial advices. So, but uh, for retail investors, uh, it's the same. Like, you know, focus on, uh, my advice is always the same. Focus on a small number of projects that you know well, and if you know that the project's gonna survive, you have, uh, and you can tolerate the risk, by all means. Um, and but understand that tomorrow the market may go down even further. Um, we don't. It may go up. It may go down. Nobody knows what's gonna happen tomorrow. But longer term horizon, the industry is staying. The industry is not going away. Um, the, there's more apps being developed. There's more people in the industry. So um, the industry is gonna get bigger if we look at five, 10, 20 year horizons. TZ, you put out a tweet talking about how many positions that you're hiring at Binance. I want to actually go into that a little bit, but but, but first, before we do, uh, a little bit more on the bear market, because like I said in the intro again, like you've been through bear markets before, Binance has been through bear markets before, this is nothing new under the sun, a lot of us have been through bear markets before, and historically in the crypto space, bear markets last about two, two and a half years. Uh, we have this like two-year bull run, we have this two-year bear market, and these things just perpetuates. However, this time it does feel a little bit different. We have like this macro story of just like there's there's war in, in, in Europe. Uh, we have unprecedented inflation in the United States. Like we're super indebted. The global war reserve currency is super indebted. And so there's a lot of murmurings about like this time it might be different. So I, I'm wondering how have you uh, positioned Binance and Binance's cash position and your investments with this like uncertainty as to how long this bear market really lasts. Like, do, how, do you have an opinion about how long this bear market is going to be? Um, I don't really have an opinion. Um, it's very hard to predict the future, but historically we've seen very accurate four year cycles. Um, but there's also many things uh, uh, in the world that are four years. Uh, the Bitcoin halving is every four years. Um, the United President's election is every four years. Um, the stock market goes through a four year cycle as well, if you look, if you look at it historically. So uh, uh, it doesn't mean that the next cycle will be exactly four years, um, but um, I think there is a pretty decent probability that that might happen. Um, and uh, but if you look at all the other different things that you that you just mentioned that you said are different, the inflation, the war, everything else, those things should really help the crypto industry. Those things should really push people to want the inflation should push people to want to hold a limited supply asset. So um, the war and the, uh, the, the the more the world is divided, um, the more that the Bitcoin is a very global currency that actually shines. Um, so the more the uh, the more those issues happen, um, the more people should need. Well, the, the advantages of uh, crypto blockchain is actually more clear. So um, yeah, to be honest, to be very frank.